Jenny Haval, a classic objects album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning. Here I have to chat about this latest album from Jenny Haval, Norwegian singer songwriter. She has been a standout in the genre over the last couple of years, especially the weirder side of singer songwriters. Uh, and you know what? Way back in the day, uh, I got put on to her Viscera debut album, and I thought she had some a lot going for her at the time. It was weird and psychedelic in parts, it was freakish and artsy in others, and she seemed to have some interesting ideas and was following through on them. But I sort of got the feeling that Innocence is kinky around the time of that album that, I don't know, I just I wasn't clicking completely with Jenny's music. Yes, it was fine. I was interested while it was on, but I wasn't really remembering any of it. And by the time her Susanna collab, Meshes of Voice, came around, I was really starting to... I don't know, just like not be interested in Jenny's music. A lot of my friends were super into her, pushing me to see her live show, which is, it's something. And honestly, around the time, I was just feeling like I wasn't clicking with her music. Literally, dozens of people told me I would love 2015's Apocalypse Girl. Still to this day, I'm just not that into it. Even her, in the end, her his voice will be the sound of paper project. It just wasn't, like, clicking with me at the time. It wasn't engaging. Like, while these albums were on, yeah, I thought Jenny had interesting ideas, but like I said, they weren't really, you know, sticking with me. But around the time of 2016's Blood Bitch, I actually turned a real corner with Jenny. Her music really started clicking with me a whole lot more. Yes. That's right, everybody. It was the album about the menstrual cycle, vampires, and late 70s horror movies. That That's the one that got me. Jenny's music was still wildly out there, genuinely left field, but I felt like her instrumentals were much easier to take in, a lot more intricate, and just this album overall, while completely bizarre and genuinely very creative at points, it was so much easier for me to just sit and enjoy and really stick with. I still love the album. And that goes double for 2019's The Practice of Love. This album is so good. It is so good. In a weird way, it almost reminds me of, like, what I used to love about The Knife back in the day. Which leads me to this very conceptual and far-out new album, which, leading up to it, we got two singles. I thought one was really good, the other one was really bad. Let's just dive right in and chat about this thing. This album starts off with Year of Love, and this is right where I want to hear Jenny. This is a fantastic single. This is a really interesting medium for Jenny. On one hand, it's some of her more human and emotional work. Certainly some of the more heartfelt music in her discography. At least, you know, universally heartfelt. But on the other hand, we have this very cosmic, very progressive art pop atmosphere that we're in with Jenny. It is immense. The production is looming, and honestly, I am all for it. I love the slick groove as well. It almost reminds me of, like, I don't know what U.S. Girls has been doing on their last few albums. It is an awesome track. It is a fantastic single. I like American Coffee as well. This one is even more far out and visually a lot more intense. It's also not as immediate. It's pretty out there. This whole album is... You know, one that you really need to sit with. A lot of these tracks evolve over time. But this track's actually pretty mesmerizing. I love the hypnotic grooves that come in. And Jenny's vocals, they are really mesmerizing. Her vocals have gotten so much more uh, accessible over the years. It's also really commanding at times, especially when things pick up about the three-minute mark. I love the warm rhythms that come in once again. It's a fantastic medium for Jenny because it's still pretty freaking out there, but there's also a lot of human elements to this that are pretty inviting. I love Cemetery of Splendor as well. I mean, this track's pretty far out once again, and Jenny sounds pretty freaking otherworldly on this track. She sounds like a damn specter, especially when you take into consider of just how pensive, how airy this instrumental is, and just how breezy her vocals are. It's pretty otherworldly stuff, but it's really hypnotic, and it really sticks with you. But you know what? I'll be honest, this isn't usually where I like to hear Jenny's music, but for some reason... This is really clicking with me right now. I am really, really, really enjoying this, and I love how intensely visual this gets once again. It's so vast. It just has such an atmosphere to it. Jenny does actually a really great job on this entire album of creating her own little world. Honestly, I don't even mind the last minute and a half here that just 
is made up of ambient sound collages. Year of the Sky is really great too. I love the spacey synths that we start off with. I love Jenny's performance once again. Mostly because hearing her in these atmospheres that are maybe not as, you know, intricate and just like jarring, just a little bit more spacious. Honestly, it really shows off her vocals, which have grown immensely over the years, it's commendable. And I love the progression here once again. I love the way the drums work themselves in and the seemingly infinite number of influences that Jenny's working with this time around. It's a great track. I definitely think the good outweighs the bad on this album, but there are a couple of moments where I feel like Jenny's maybe gone a little bit too far out. Classic Objects is one of them, and listen, as far as most of the material on this album goes, I really love how pensive it is. I really don't mind, you know, sitting and waiting with an instrumental on this album. I think there's a little too much. There's one of the most least interesting and least progressive tracks on this entire album. And it's a shame because her vocals are really, really charming and easy to take in. It's just a little too dreamy, a little too light for me. Jupiter is a tough one, too. This one is a turn for the safe and non-progressive at all and just straight up boring. And listen, there are some okay ideas on this track, but at over seven minutes long, it's a toughie. And the warm, inviting drums and the rhythms that come with them are really nice when they do pop in eventually, but even Jenny doesn't sound completely sold on this track. And you all may disagree here, but I think Freedom is the worst track here. I wasn't into this when it first dropped as a single for a reason. It's not nearly as focused as a lot of the tracks on here. It doesn't have that cohesive thought. It doesn't have any progression either. This sounds like it was honestly recorded at a different time in Jenny's life, especially not on these recording sessions. God, no. And then we get The Revolution Will Not Be Owned as a finale, and I'm kind of stuck in the middle on this track. This is a real tough one. It's pretty classy at times. It shows her diving into some neoclassical, something that I certainly would like to hear a little bit more of. But it's kind of uneventful, and... Yeah, eventually if you sit with this track, there's a beat that comes in that's actually pretty fresh. It, it does sharpen this track up a little bit. It's not the worst sin committed here. But Jenny doesn't sound as confident on this track, and it just ends up being a real middle-of-the-road finale. This, this album has a lot of potential. Most of Jenny's ideas here go over really well. It's one of the more genuinely progressive art pop albums I've heard in a while. But on a couple of notes on here, man, you know, Jenny, when she gets a little too far out, things go downhill really fast. Things go from being progressive, fresh, and really enchanting to uneventful and boring very fast. I do think, though, the good outweighs the bad. I'm feeling a very light 7 on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.